Hi, it's Katrina. Are we truly alone in the universe? We've always gazed up at the night sky filled with wonder and questions. Recent discoveries and shocking revelations are forcing us to reconsider our place in the cosmos. Prepare to question everything you know as we uncover the truth about UFOs and their potential connection to our distant past. So get ready for some fun! UFO Bits The British government might be in possession of their very own spaceship, just like the US supposedly is at Area 51. This is going to blow your mind. In 1957, Britain had their own Roswell incident. A small flying saucer was discovered near Scarborough on Silpho Moor. All these years later, fragments of the mysterious object have been discovered secreted away in the Science Museum's archive. The pieces could prove that we are not alone in the universe. The incident is one of the most mysterious in British history. The flying saucer crashed into Scarborough, which is located in Yorkshire, England. It was collected and chopped into pieces to be examined by various scientists. Then, over the years, the bits and pieces just sort of disappeared. The UFO was originally found by three men, according to what the Yorkshire Post reported. It happened three weeks after Russia launched the very first satellite in human history, the legendary Sputnik. The world was captivated by all things space in 1957. The crashed UFO didn't get picked up by the military and taken away like in Roswell, allegedly. Instead, it was investigated by locals, including the owner of a cafe. What the locals found most astonishing of all was something you would never guess. The UFO was covered in, wait for it, hieroglyphics. The UFO had a copper bottom inscribed in what looked like ancient Egyptian writing, and it contained a small book inside of it, covered in additional hieroglyphics. It was claimed that when deciphered, the hieroglyphics revealed a warning from the aliens. The message was simple you will improve or disappear. It was clearly a threat against humanity, but was it legitimate? The Silpho Moor object was studied by metallurgists and other scientists. They quickly determined that it had no unique properties and was not a spaceship. More than that, it hadn't even been to space. Now, fragments of the original ship have been found at the Science Museum. What if the original tests had been incorrect? It was in the 1950s, after all, so they didn't have all the tools at their disposal that scientists do today. Dr. David Clark at Sheffield Hallam University was invited to study the fragments. They still haven't been linked to any spacefaring civilization. Experts still believe the crashed ship was a hoax, while others believe that scientists are lying about the ship's origins. Aliens in Afghanistan There is a story that in 1942, a UFO smashed into a remote part of Afghanistan. And that's it. There are no more details. All anyone knows is that a ship crashed, was potentially recovered, and that there were weird artifacts found in Afghanistan. The artifacts were blocks of stone with UFOs and alien creatures carved into them. These supposed artifacts suggest a long history of alien intervention in the Middle East. The incident in 1942 was unconfirmed, but there was a more modern incident that occurred in Afghanistan that has been loosely confirmed by U.S. military personnel. A retired Navy officer recently claimed that he spotted a metallic orb in Afghanistan. However, he is too afraid to come forward with his real name. According to what he told Fox News, the ex-Navy senior chief petty officer fears he could be reprimanded if his identity is leaked. He spoke to Fox News in secret, not giving out any explicit details. He said that he definitely saw a UFO, not just any old UFO. What he saw in Afghanistan looked identical to the metallic orb that was shown at the 2023 U.S. Senate hearing on aliens. If you believe the truth is out there, you most likely remember the UFO hearing on April 29th. It was the second congressional hearing on the issue of UFOs to ever take place. There was a closed session that the public missed out on. Then there was a public session in which the military revealed a big, big secret. The military was, at the time, investigating almost 700 cases of UFOs. During the hearing, two clips of unidentified objects were presented that looked like real alien ships. However, it was decided there was still a lack of evidence that the objects were extraterrestrial. Regardless of what you believe, it's becoming increasingly clear that strange things are happening in the skies around the world. The Hybrid Alien Fish Creatures of Mesopotamia Let's take a trip back in time to Mesopotamia. There is something very 
very unusual that appears throughout ancient Mesopotamian art. The earliest depictions of it are from the first millennium BC, around 3,000 years ago. The thing I'm talking about is a fish monstrosity, a hybrid fish slash man slash bird alien thing, and that's the best way I can describe it. The bizarre creature is depicted as engaging in religious ceremonies. There are massive relief carvings of it on the crumbling walls of forgotten Assyrian palaces. They were immortalized as clay figurines. They were left imprinted on cylinder seals. Enough images have been found of the creature to suggest it might have been present in everyday life thousands of years ago. Keep in mind that most of Mesopotamia is in ruins now, or already lost forever. If so many depictions of the fish alien thing are still around, there must have been thousands before. The bizarre beings are known as Apkalu. According to the ancient Babylonian legends, they served as advisors to ancient kings. Not human kings, though. They were the alien viziers who advised the ten mythical kings who ruled before the biblical flood. I hope you're comfortable because things are going to get weird. The best way to start is with an image of an Apkalu. This relief was made in the 14th century BC. You can see how strange these creatures were. The first mention of Apkalu is in a piece of literature written by Berossus in 281 BC. Berossus was a priest at the Temple of Bel, an ancient Mesopotamian god. He wrote that the Apkalu arrived in prehistoric times. They came from the seas onto the dry earth during a period in which Babylon didn't have any laws or rules. The first king of Sumer, Alulim, began his reign and the Apkalu began fashioning laws for men to follow. They also taught humans how to evolve. The Apkalu taught men science, art, how to build houses, construct temples, secrets of geometry, how to plant seeds and collect fruits. The fish creatures came from a world beneath the sea to teach humans how to become more technologically sophisticated. Could there have been a race of hyper-intelligent fish creatures at the dawn of civilization? Some people believe they were aliens dwelling in the water, going to the surface only to help kickstart humanity. According to the Babylonian legends, the great Anunnaki god Marduk banished the Apkalu after the flood. Ancient alien enthusiasts asked the question, could there have been two different species of aliens? the Anunnaki on land, and the Apkalu in the sea? It's a shame that archaeologists only have legends written in cuneiform and bizarre images carved in stone to understand the truth. Do you think something helped humans advance at the dawn of civilization? Let me know your thoughts. And now for number nine, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a huge thank you to Jace Jackson's Mimi for the generous super thanks. We wouldn't be here without you. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Nazca Alien Mummy A mummified alien was discovered in a remote cave in Peru. According to the scientists who analyzed the alien's remains, 30% of its DNA is similar to ours, but the other 70% is entirely different. The creature appears to be an alien-human hybrid. This news is as sensational as it is unbelievable. But the DNA tests were carried out by a real laboratory called Biotech Mole. The alien itself was found in a remote cave in Peru's Nazca region, close to the Nazca lines. That can't be a coincidence, can it? Ufologist Jaime Maussan made the announcement at the Ufology World Congress in Montserrat, Spain. He claimed the laboratory established the origin of the creature as being not of this planet. They even compared the DNA to animals like primates, crocodiles, and sea turtles. But from what they saw, there were no similarities. Jaime said it's his belief that the discovery has been undermined by the government in Peru and by scientists of the Peruvian Ministry of Culture. They have tried to label the alien body as a hoax. Things just get crazier and crazier. The lab tests were able to date the mummified remains as being from around 400 AD. The alien creature died around the same time that the Nazca culture of Peru began to vanish. The Nazca civilization appeared around 200 BC and was completely gone by 600 AD. They are most famous today for the unusual geo geoglyphs they left scrawled across the desert. Their geoglyphs are beyond explanation. Their combined length estimated at 800 miles. Because the geoglyphs are impossible to see on the ground and only visible from the air, it is safe to assume they created them like that on purpose. Ancient alien enthusiasts believe the Nazca made their geoglyphs as artwork to be observed by alien visitors hovering in the sky. The fact the alien body was found near the Nazca lines is kind of suspicious. Perhaps the Nazca had formed a friendship with the extraterrestrials. 
Seeing as the alien's DNA is part human, perhaps they even made hybrid babies. I guess to learn more about this, we need to dig deeper into the UFOlogy World Congress. If you have any insight or thoughts about this, let me know in the comments. The truth of the Roswell crash. I'm going to tell you exactly where you can visit a flying saucer and even go inside it. It's the space disk in North Main Street in the city of Roswell in New Mexico. Its metallic surface glows underneath the hot southeastern sun. You can enter the spaceship, but be warned, it has never actually been to space. This is a replica of the UFO that allegedly crashed just outside the rural town in 1947. If the conspiracy is to be believed, the U.S. military recovered the shattered ship and transported it to Area 51. But what really happened on that day in early July? Let's stitch together the puzzle of America's greatest unexplained incident piece by piece. It began with William Brazel. He woke up early on a summer morning for what he thought would be a normal day of work at the J.B. Foster Ranch in Lincoln County. When he got to work, he found a wreck. Something had crashed onto the property, scattering what looked to William like bits of tinfoil, rubber strips, and other scraps of debris. William had never even heard of flying saucers before. World War II had just ended, and most people weren't concerned about things like science fiction and alien invaders. William would soon know more than he wanted about UFOs. A few weeks prior, on June 24th, pilot Kenneth Arnold claimed that he saw nine unidentified objects that looked like huge flying saucers near Mount Rainier in Washington. Arnold said the saucers were moving at a staggering 1,200 miles per hour. His report was legitimate enough that it appeared in the East Oregonian newspaper. At the time, everyone thought he was crazy. There was no known crash that could reach that kind of speed. On July 7th, William delivered a box full of debris he'd collected from the crash site to Sheriff George Wilcox in Roswell. Then things took off like crazy. Wilcox contacted Colonel William Blanchard at the Roswell Army Airfield. The colonel sent agents down to the J.B. Foster Ranch to gather the remaining material. The next day, the intelligence office admitted that they had gained possession of a mysterious flying disc with the cooperation of local ranchers and the sheriff's office. The story made national news, and the Army's attempt to save themselves was too late. The Army went back on what they originally said claiming the debris was from a crashed weather balloon instead of a spaceship, but it was too late. The papers were published and the nation was gripped with UFO fever. In 1978, nuclear physicist Stanton Friedman interviewed Major Jesse A. Marcel, who had been in the group of officers dispatched to collect the remains of the UFO. In the interview, Marcel admitted that what was discovered 31 years earlier was not from planet Earth. He blew the whistle on the whole charade, saying the government had ordered him to stay quiet about it. People had already been interested, but that interview pushed the conspiracy into the blinding light of day. Everyone was talking about Roswell, and they haven't stopped. Speculation continues to this very day. The government insists there never was a UFO. Without physical pieces of the crash, there is no way to tell whether the government is telling the truth or not. The Alien Pharaoh of Egypt This is one of those fun theories where aliens and ancient history come together. It's time to explain the weirdly alien-looking statues of the Pharaoh Akhenaten. Or at least try. Pharaoh Akhenaten ruled Egypt from 1353 to 1336 BC, and he may have had alien DNA in his blood. He is most famous for changing his name from Amenhotep IV to Akhenaten and changing the religion of Egypt. Alongside his wife, the beautiful Nefertiti, they abandoned the ancient gods and worshipped one god, Aten. Akhenaten was a very controversial figure in ancient Egypt. He had radical policies that tore Egypt apart from the inside out. His societal changes caused such instability that Egypt almost collapsed. Some scholars argue he did make Egypt collapse. The new religious laws he put into place, demanding everyone worship a new sun god they had never heard of before, began a steep decline to ruin. He was obsessed with the sun and wanted everyone to worship a new god and get rid of the old ones. Akhenaten was represented as very unattractive by our standards today. Ancient alien enthusiasts point out he looks alien in artwork from the time. He had a huge head, dangling arms, and a protruding stomach. His appearance and his sudden personality and religious change makes people think that maybe he was an alien. But just because he looked weird and changed the religion doesn't mean that it's proof of 
of alien DNA. To explain Akhenaten's odd appearance, scientists have come up with a few ideas. They think he may have been plagued by genetic abnormalities. He may have been deformed due to years of inbreeding amongst royal Egyptians, which was a common practice to keep it all in the family. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Anti-Gravity and the Baltic Sea Anomaly an artifact has been found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, near where scientists found a hidden spaceship a few years ago. You probably have heard before about the Baltic Sea anomaly, uncovered in 2011 by Swedish researchers on the Ocean X team. Now, another anomaly has been found in the same area. This one apparently has anti-gravity characteristics. The Baltic Sea anomaly is still an unexplained mystery even after more than 10 years of speculation. The Ocean X team did not set out to find something impossible at the bottom of the ocean. They were looking for treasure when an unusual blip appeared on their sonar. Team leader Peter Lindbergh said they were about to turn around and go home when they got the surprise of a lifetime. In a radio interview with NBC News, Peter said the anomaly has strange stair-shaped formations, looking as if it were constructed by human hands. But considering it's at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, it must have been made tens of thousands of years ago, before the Ice Age ended. Peter alluded to the fact that it might be a ruin, like the lost city of Atlantis. But many people think it's a spaceship, mostly because the Baltic Sea anomaly looks identical to the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. In the aftermath of the discovery, scientists wanted to learn more. Some people found rock samples at the site, but those samples didn't reveal anything shocking. Over the last few years, the anomaly has mostly been forgotten. Scientists claim it's nothing but a suspiciously perfect rock formation that looks part spaceship, part sunken city. The newly discovered artifact was allegedly recovered by divers at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, very near the anomaly. By the way, I should mention that those who have investigated the anomaly have experienced issues with their equipment. Electronic devices, satellite phones, and things of that nature have stopped working in the area above the anomaly. The newly found artifact has been estimated at 140,000 years old. Nobody knows what it is, only that it seems to generate an energy field that scientists can't understand. They are calling it an anti-gravity device. But the truth is that they don't know what its energy field does. Preliminary tests show the artifact is made from rare earth minerals, but that's all anyone knows for now. There aren't any mainstream reports on how the object was found, nor which scientific team is investigating it. Everything surrounding the device is very hush-hush. The Mystery of the Lizard People If Egypt was ruled by alien pharaohs, perhaps they were the descendants of an even older race of lizard people. Humanoid reptilian aliens! Beings from outer space that had the bodies of humans and the heads of lizards. It sounds like something from a bad sci-fi movie, but it's not. I'm going to show you some figurines that are 7,000 years old. The Al Ubaid figurines are artifacts that were recovered from the city of Ur in southern Mesopotamia. They date to between 5200 and 4200 BC, according to the British Museum. The museum claims the lizard figurines likely had religious value. They may have been used in rituals. Maybe, but not everybody feels that way. Some suspect the figurines were carved in the likeness of real, living creatures. The lizard figurines don't look like ritual idols. They look like small statues of real men and women, only with lizard features. They have long heads, just like how Akhenaten had a long head. The figurines have elongated faces and lizard noses. They have slitted, almond-shaped eyes. Many of the female lizard figurines were even carved breastfeeding tiny reptilian baby cradled in the crook of her arm. They look very human-like. Why were the ancient people of Ur so obsessed with creating reptilian figurines? The extreme conspiracy theory is perhaps the people of Ur were ruled by a race of reptilian-alien hybrids, which they refer to as the Anunnaki. It could be that the legends from Mesopotamia are more than myth. But if the Anunnaki were around, where did they go? Did you know reptilian gods were worshipped by cultures all around the world? The Hopi of northern Arizona still tell stories about an ancient reptilian race. They call them their snake brothers and believe they built underground cities beneath Arizona, Mexico, and as far away as Central America. The Maya even had a god named Ugumaz who was a reptilian. In India, ancient scriptures speak of the Naga, a race of reptile-human hybrids who lived underground. 
Indian texts also reference a mysterious tribe known as the Sarpa, who shared similarities with reptiles. They were humans but had snake-like features on their faces, just like the Ubaid figurines. In Japan, people used to fear reptilian humanoids known as Kappa. No matter where you go, stories of reptile people can be found. Why were lizard humanoids so important to ancient people? The Cape Girardeau Alien Crash Before Roswell, there was another UFO that crashed in America but didn't get any attention. At Cape Girardeau, Missouri, locals are still trying to make sense of what happened more than 80 years ago. Paul Blake Smith recently wrote a book about the Cape Girardeau incident. When he was doing his research for the book, people told him he shouldn't be talking about the crash. He was told the incident was a national security threat and that according to official channels, it never happened. Paul describes trying to get hard evidence like nailing jello to the wall. In other words, it was frustrating. It took some work, but Paul did put the pieces together eventually. He learned that the crash occurred in late April of 1941. It was a disaster from the start. Something smashed into an empty field near the Cape Girardeau airport. Locals thought it was an airplane, as this was long before most people knew what a UFO was. One of the first people on scene was Pastor William G. Huffman. When he got there, things didn't look quite right. Where was the airplane? Where were the wings? And where was the propeller? The field was littered in tiny bits of metal. The field was also on fire, and at the center of the crash zone was a round silver disc with a huge split in it. Even not knowing anything about spaceships, William understood instinctively that this was no simple airplane crash. Upon closer inspection, William found bodies. And no, they were not human. One of the creatures was still alive but breathing raggedly. The other two were already dead. William claimed the creatures were about four feet tall with gray skin, huge black eyes, and very thin gangly limbs. Before William could do anything, the alien died before his eyes. Shortly after, the US military showed up and everybody was forced to leave. The site was cleared and that was the end of the story. Ever since, nobody has known the fate of the UFO or the dead aliens. Unlike the Roswell incident, what happened at Cape Girardeau didn't become national news. When the FBI was recently asked about what happened, they replied by saying, we were unable to identify records responsive to your request. When the United States Air Force was asked about what happened, they answered with almost the exact same thing. They said that they found no documentation concerning this event. Paul believes the government has covered up the alien crash for the last eight decades. The Aliens Who Visited Jesus when Jesus Christ was crucified, aliens were there watching. A painting hanging on the wall of a cathedral in the country of Georgia might prove it. The painting depicts Jesus Christ hung on a cross, and hovering in the background are two alien ships that look like flying jellyfish. This painting, done by an unknown artist in the 11th century, can be found at the Svetsitskoveli Cathedral, and it isn't the only one of its kind. Another painting, also by an unknown artist, is kept at the Visoki Dikani Monastery in Kosovo. It's also a painting of the crucifixion, and it also shows what looks like spaceships flying across the sky. Scholars have dismissed the spaceships by labeling them as guardian angels, but this painting has guardian angels in it already. Why make guardian angels with wings and then another guardian angels in flying spaceships? The painting in Kosovo is from the 1350s. It's starting to seem like in the Middle Ages, UFOs were part of the crucifixion story. Maybe hundreds of years ago, it was common knowledge that Jesus had a connection to alien visitors. But since then, the knowledge has been lost. What do you think about this theory? Let me know in the comments below. The Eyeball Planet Scientists have found a planet that not only looks like a giant eyeball, but could be the best hope yet at finding alien life. If our planet was taken over by extraterrestrial reptilians thousands of years ago, they may have come from this planet. It isn't even that far away, only 48 light years from Earth in the constellation Cetus. Its official name is LHS 1140b, and it is humongous. The alien world is 1.7 times the size of our own planet. Scientists think it is covered in liquid water, meaning there is a high possibility of life. Planets with water on them, especially liquid water, are far more likely to facilitate the evolution of complex life forms. This new discovery was made thanks to the James Webb Telescope. 
The telescope analyzed the planet with its sophisticated instruments and found that up to 20% of its mass is water. Plus, the planet is located in the Goldilocks zone of its host star. That means it's not too far away from its star to be freezing, but not too close to be roasting. It's in the perfect position for life to flourish with a comfortable temperature. Scientists think it's more comfortable on the eyeball planet than on Earth. If you experienced the recent seemingly unending heat wave from Hades, you would most likely be happy on the eyeball planet. Scientists have guessed its surface temperature is a cozy 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The data also shows that the eyeball planet may have an atmosphere rich in nitrogen, just like our atmosphere. The combination of all of these features makes it highly possible that there could be intelligent creatures on the planet. But why does it look like an eyeball? Most of the planet is frozen, just like Earth used to be. But there is one huge section that isn't frozen. It's about the size of the Atlantic Ocean. This unfrozen section appears as a huge blue iris in an otherwise completely pale eyeball. If there are intelligent creatures on this alien world, what do you think they look like? Where is the Pentagon's UFO? A Pentagon insider has blown the whistle on the US government, claiming they have their own alien spaceship. What's crazy is that the insider is highly reputable and believable. Dr. James Lakotsky is not a conspiracy theorist. He isn't an armchair archaeologist either. He used to be the boss at the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Weapons System Application Program. His credentials are as good as they get in this kind of situation. According to the recent bombshell James dropped, the US is in possession of a craft of unknown origin. This craft has a streamlined configuration that is ideal for aerodynamic flight. The craft also has no air intakes, no exhausts, no wings, and no control surfaces. It doesn't even look like it has an engine, a fuel tank, or anywhere to charge it. The craft is essentially naked. It's a big hunk of metal that looks exactly the way you might picture a flying saucer to be. But is this the real thing? And if it is, why is James blowing the whistle on the government? OSAP was established by the Pentagon to investigate the bizarre and unexplainable capabilities of UFOs, or as they are more commonly known now, UAPs. It was a project that cost $22 million. This is all real, and it is happening behind closed doors. James was the leader of this investigative team. He and his colleagues compiled what is believed to be the most comprehensive UFO database in history. It contains over 200,000 reports of unidentified flying objects. While most of them can be explained with common sense, there are more than a few that challenge the concept of reality. The organization was formed after one of the most notorious UFO sightings of the 21st century. In 2004, U.S. Navy pilots witnessed an object in the sky dubbed the Tic Tac. It was so strange that the government had to establish an entirely new team using black budget funding just to investigate it. Alongside James Lakotsky, who is a real rocket scientist, by the way, was Jay Stratton. They worked together from 2008 until 2021 to investigate everything related to UFO activity in the country. Stratton left the task force in 2021 with 143 unexplainable events still pending. Now James is trying to bring attention to a real UFO he claims the government has hidden in a bunker somewhere. Do you believe what James Lakotsky said? Is he a reliable source? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. GNZ11 In March 2016, astronomers announced the discovery of the most distant galaxy ever detected. The infant galaxy, dubbed GNZ11, is some 13.4 billion light years away and is located in the direction of the constellation Ursa Major. It has just 1% of our galaxy's mass in stars and is around 25 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy. The study was led by Yale University astronomer Dr. Pascal Oesch and was published in the Astrophysical Journal. We see GNZ11 at a time when the universe was only 3% of its current age, Dr. Oesch stated of the galaxy. Using Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3, Dr. Oesch and his co-workers measured the precise distance to the galaxy spectroscopically by splitting the light into its component colors. 
They pushed Hubble to its limits to get the spectroscopic data needed to determine the galaxy's red shift, which is a way to measure its distance from Earth. Until astronomers figured out the distance of GNZ11, the equally uneventfully named EGSY8P7 was the most distant galaxy measured spectroscopically. It had a red shift of 8.68, or 13.2 billion years into the past. GNZ11 brings us 200 million years closer to the Big Bang, with a redshift of 11.1. .1. Although 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang seems like a lot of time for a galaxy to form, Professor Illingworth explained the impressiveness of GNZ11's size. It takes really fast growth, producing stars at a huge rate to have formed a galaxy that is a billion solar masses so soon. Radio Evidence of the First Stars once upon a time, the universe was pitch dark. Billions of years ago, a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, the first star formed, followed by more stars and then galaxies. The light from these stars is so faint, even the most advanced observatory is unable to detect it. A group of five astronomers announced in early 2018 that they'd found evidence of the first stars that came into existence in the form of radio signals. The 13.6 billion year old signal was picked up in the outback of Western Australia using radio antennas the size of coffee tables as part of the experiment to detect the global epoch of reionization signature, or EDGES project for short. The discovery is to be approached cautiously, astronomer and Harvard professor Avi Leb warned. Radio signals within the Milky Way galaxy can be tens of thousands of times more intense than the faint signal suggesting the first stars had been detected. Researchers compared it to trying to hear someone whisper while at a rock concert and had to remove the dominant signal. Moreover, the instruments required for the measurement of the radio signal could produce false signals if the calibrations are off by just a few hundredths of a percent. The tiny absorption signal is thought to be the cumulative shadows of hydrogen clouds from between 180 and 250 million years after the Big Bang. ADFS 27 The largest galaxy merger ever discovered was witnessed in late 2017 by scientists using the radio telescope Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, in Chile. The two massive and incredibly bright galaxies were collectively labeled ADFS 27 and constitute what scientists call superluminous starburst galaxies. They are some of the oldest known galaxies in the universe and are located 12.7 billion light years away. In a November 2017 article for Popular Mechanics, writer Avery Thompson referred to galaxy collisions as the largest and most intricate choreography of matter ever performed in the universe, and a dance that takes billions of years to complete. As two galaxies merge, supermassive black holes combine and collide, billions of stars condense and scatter, and nebulas of gas buckle into thousands of new stars. Dominique Rikers, the lead author of a study that was published in the Astrophysical Journal, stated that finding just one hyperluminous starburst galaxy is remarkable in itself. Finding two of these rare galaxies in such close proximity is truly astounding. He went on to say that considering their extreme distance from Earth and the frenetic star-forming activity inside each, it's possible we may be witnessing the most intense galaxy merger known to date. The brightness of AFDS 27 was caused by a side-swiping collision, which set off an intense burst of star formation. Each of the two galaxies is at least a dozen times the size of the Milky Way, and they are pumping stars out a thousand times faster than our 100,000 light-year wide galaxy. It's possible that the massive galaxies could someday form the core of a new galaxy cluster. This would mean AFDS 27 would be located in the center as hundreds or thousands of galaxies revolved around it. Whether a galaxy cluster will result from the merger can be determined by follow-up observations with different telescopes. Ancient Black Holes Earlier this year, astronomers from Japan, Taiwan, and Princeton University discovered 83 quasars powered by supermassive black holes. A quasar is defined as a massive and extremely remote celestial object emitting huge amounts of energy. The discovery was made in the distant universe, when the universe was less than a tenth of its current age. The black holes are 13 billion light years away, meaning that the view represents what they looked like 13 billion years ago, some 800 million years after the Big Bang. Michael Strauss, one of the study's co-authors and professor of astrophysical sciences at Princeton University, said, It is remarkable that such massive, dense objects were able to form so soon after the Big Bang. This finding revealed how common black holes were in the universe's early history and considerably increases the amount of black holes known to exist at that time. Moreover, the discovery offers new insight into how the physical state of gas was affected by black holes during the early universe's first billion years of existence. 
Supermassive black holes can be millions or billions of times more massive than the Sun and are found at the centers of galaxies. It's unclear when they first formed or how many there were in the distant early universe, although they are prevalent today. A supermassive black hole begins to shine as a quasar when gases start forming on it. To collect their data, the research team mounted a cutting-edge instrument called a Hypersuprime Cam, or HSC, onto the Subaru Telescope of the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, located in Hawaii at the summit of Mauna Kea. The Subaru Telescope is one of the largest in the world, and the HSC has a field view seven times the area of the full moon. Whirlpool Galaxies in 2017, an international team of astronomers discovered that some of the universe's earliest galaxies contained swirling gas. The newborn galaxies spin like a whirlpool, similarly to the Milky Way galaxy, and were observed as they appeared 13 billion years ago. Team member Gary Illingworth, professor emeritus of astronomy and astrophysics at UC Santa Cruz, explained that by looking at objects billions of light years away, astronomers are literally peering into the past, because it takes a long time for light from distant objects to reach Earth. Thanks to ever-advancing technology, it's now possible for the experts to watch the formation of the earliest galaxies. Led by Rensky Smith of the Kavli Institute of Cosmology at the University of Cambridge, the team carried out their research also using ALMA in Chile. Looking back at a very early stage in cosmic history, they discovered star-forming galaxies that spin in a way not thought to occur until much later on. They also observed two small newborn galaxies from 13.7 billion years ago, about 800 million years after the Big Bang. ALMA's ability to collect far infrared light enabled the team to see for the first time the internal motion of the gas that fueled the galaxy's growth, as well as calculate the distance to the galaxies. Similarly to more mature galaxies like our own, these young ones spun in a whirlpool motion. To the surprise of the research team, the galaxies were less chaotic than expected, although they were forming stars at a higher rate than other newborn galaxies. A fossil gas cloud. Last year, astronomers discovered a relic cloud of gas using the world's most power optic telescope, the WM Keck Observatory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. The discovery was led by PhD student Fred Robert and Professor Michael Murphy at Swinburne University of Technology. The two other known fossil clouds were discovered in 2011. This incredibly rare fossil provides new information about the formation of the universe and the first galaxies. Everywhere we look, the gas in the universe is polluted by waste-heavy elements from exploding stars, Robert explained. But this particular cloud seems pristine, unpolluted by stars even 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. He went on to add that it seems to be a true relic of the Big Bang. Max 1149 JD1 in 2012, astronomers discovered a galaxy 13.3 billion light-years away, containing stars that formed just 250 million years after the Big Bang. Officially known as Max 1149 JD1, it's one of the farthest objects from Earth whose lights can be observed. Nicholas Laporte, study co-author and a researcher at the University College of London, stated in an interview with Space.com that Max 1149 JD1 is the most distant galaxy with a precise distance measurement and the farthest known source of oxygen. The presence of oxygen was telling of the star's age. When stars die, oxygen is released into the galaxy's gas clouds. This means that an older generation of stars had already come and gone within the galaxy. Researchers were surprised at how far back into the universe's past this oxygen had formed. They also used the ALMA telescope to measure the galaxy's redshift. Based on its redshift measurement of 9.1, the scientists concluded that they were looking at a 550 million year old galaxy. The team then observed the galaxy's brightness, which suggested that just 250 million years after the Big Bang, the galaxy underwent substantial star formation. Researchers hope to someday view the first stars and galaxies in the universe using more sensitive instruments. Their ultimate goal is to eventually reach an epoch known as Cosmic Dawn, when the first stars in the universe formed. Disappearing Sections of the Universe The universe started out as a single point and estimated 13.799 billion years ago when the Big Bang occurred. Since then, it's been expanding. In the late 20th century, two teams of scientists attempted to measure cosmic deceleration, or the rate at which the expansion of the universe was slowing. The researchers were shocked to learn that the universe isn't just not slowing down, it's accelerating. And even more surprising, the most far-flung galaxies appear to be picking up speed as they become increasingly distant. Newer calculations took into consideration the accelerated expansion of the observable universe, subsequently determining that it has a radius of at least 46 billion light-years. The observable universe is what it sounds like, the extent of everything that can be detected from Earth. 
Beyond it is the unobservable universe, which is also what it sounds like. Some regions of space are moving away from the Earth faster than the speed of light. As the observable universe accelerates, more regions of space are lost to the cosmic horizon and the unobservable universe each year. Theoretically, if this expansion never stops, the universe's visible horizon will ultimately begin shrinking. How are things expanding faster? That is the question. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new about space. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!